Hello community. Last time we talked about Stable Diffusion XL and about your control net. And today I show you how to use some very tiny adapter control nets and have a look. This here on the left side you can upload an image and on the right side I apply this text to image adapter to modify the image according to my wishes. So I show you how to code and I explain to you the theory of it. So now back to the theory. In my last video, I showed you about uh, Stable Diffusion XL, the control net implementation. And you remember we had here, for example, the control net for the pose. So we simply draw here where we want our persons to be. And then automatically with control net, I can position each and every object where I like it to be. Great. Now, as I told you, today we're going to talk about the Stable Diffusion XL text to image adapters. But before we jump to them, there is something in between. And this is, of course, we take our control net and we use here the low rank approximation. Yes, of course. So let's have a look at this. Now, the control net neural network normally are quite large. I've seen from 3.6 to 5 point something. So in the, in the region of 5 gigabyte are your control net models. So depending on your computer infrastructure, not an easy task. What we do now, exactly like in the large language model, we take here in Stable Diffusion XL also a LoRa configuration and we apply it here on the control net neural network. So what we do, we add, we inject here some low rank parameter for some fine tuning of the control net. Beautiful, we have our LoRa's established. And as you can see, the file size, if we go with a rank 256 from LoRa, goes down from five gigabyte to about 700 megabyte. And if we even uh, decrease here the rank of the low rank approximation, to 128, we even go down to 300, 400 megabyte. If you compare this to the five gigabyte, you see that control LoRa is really an interesting option if you have not such a powerful compute infrastructure. Great. Now, there are different control LoRa models depending here on the specific task that you want. Let's talk about three, the depth, the line art, and the canny. Now, depth is clear. This is simply the third dimension of the image. You provide here the neural network information, what is in front, what is in the background, what are the distances in three dimension. Line art, simply. Basic outlines or contours of object without any shading or any depth information. Canny edges based on intensity changes in the image, also without any depth information. Where do we use it? Depth, of course, in 3D modeling, three-dimensional scenes from a two-dimensional image. Line art, simply for illustration for comics or if you want to color something. Canny. We use for image processing computer vision for edge detection. These are here, really we see all the edges. The appearance is of course, grayscale image, I'll show you in a second. Line art has some clean conscious lines that define the shape and the details of an object. And Kenny is some binary image with white lines representing all the edges against a black background. Let's have a look at this. Depth, simple as I showed you, you know exactly here what is here in the foreground and what is in the background. If you go to Canny, you see here exactly all the different edges in the image that when you apply Stable Diffusion Excel, that you want to generate here an image with more or less exactly those edges. Great. Now, of course, stability I control LoRa. If you go to Hugging Face, we have the models over there. As you can see, control LoRa, Canny, rank 256, about 770 megabytes. Control LoRa depth, control LoRa recolor, or for sketch, this is where you go. Beautiful. So now we have control LoRa. 
But if we want to go even further, if we say 700 megabytes is still too much, can we go even more down in the size? Yes, this is where we have the text to image adapters. And those adapters are absolutely the thing that we used here in large language models. Now, first research paper was in February 2023, Peking University, Tencent, University of Macau, learning adapters to dig out more controllable ability for text to image diffusion models. Great. What is it? It is exactly what we know that we inject some adapters. Here we have here our UNAT, and then as you can see, either we have here the pose information or we have the edge information. We inject adapters and the system is trained on this. Nothing specific, beautiful. If you want to read here, I think the best article on this topic, Hugging Face, September 8, 2023, efficient controllable generation for SDXL with text to image adapters, great literature. So here we go. Now the file size goes down from five gigabyte to 700 megabytes to about 200 megabytes. So if you're running on a weak computer infrastructure, the text to image adapters provide a, a competitive advantage in this particular matter. They are much smaller in size and unlike the control net, the adapter runs just once for the entire course in the denoising process. As I showed you, we have different kind of sketch, depth, as I already showed you, or some pose are open, pose guided. So you exactly draw here exactly where you want the persons in your synthetic image to be, in which pose there are, and Stable Diffusion Excel generates here the, the image accordingly. Great. Right. Now, of course, I told you, I show you the code. This is the first part of the code. This is the second part of the code. It is that easy, but what do you think? We do this in a video. So here we go now. So what do we do? We code now on a free Colab notebook here, our text to image SDXL adapters. So here we go. At first, pip install GitHub Diffuser, then control net and our transformer. This is the standard we always have to have. Great. When this is loading, you see here, we use your control net, the line art detector. And yes, thank you, thank you. We have here our diffusers. From the Hugging Face library, we have our auto encoder. Wait a second. Then we have our Euler anchor stroll. You know, this is not a solution here for the numerical approximation of our diffusion equation. Then we have our Stable Diffusion XL adapter pipeline and our uh, text to image adapter. Great. So today, as I told you, we load here the line art detector from text to image adapter. So we have here, we go here to Hugging Face and we download here the line art detector for Stable Diffusion XL. If you go there, here we are, Hugging Face. Here you have your line art detector. Beautiful. So, first step, great, load the pipeline. Yeah, I can run this in the meantime. Then we take here Stability I, the Stable Diffusion XL base model. This is what I showed you last time when we were coding here Stable Diffusion XL. This is it. As I told you, we use here for the numerical uh, solution for the approximation of our uh, stochastic differential equation, we use here Euler and Kostral scheduler. Then exactly the same autoencoder that we used last time when I showed you how to code the refiner model and the control net. Here we go, variational autoencoder floating point 16. And then here we have it. This now is our Stable Diffusion XL adapter pipeline. So what we need, we have our model, our variational autoencoder, our adapter we're gonna use, the scheduler we use here, the precision we're gonna work with, and we put everything to CUDA, or you can simply offload it to CPU. And then we have here our line art detector. Great. Then next step, oh yeah, if just wanted to show you, if you're interested in the code here, 
for our Stable Diffusion XL adapter. Here we have the class Stable Diffusion XL adapter pipeline. And here you have all the information, all the input that we need, all the arguments. Here we have our text to image adapter. The adapter weights, the versional autoencoder. You remember from my last video, the text encoder, the tokenizer, normally we have two. Then our UNET architecture, the scheduler, the safety checker, the feature extractor. You know all of this. I don't have to show you again. Next step is now we need an image. So we simply upload here a very simple image. Done. And then, then comes the point where I say, okay, generate the image with our text to image adapters. Almost the same as ControlNet LoRa, but even smaller. So again, what we have. We have a positive prompt. I say a blue eyes dragon roars with fire. Then a negative prompt. Not ugly, not disfigured, no painting. And then we go. Now we generate the image. Look how easy it is. We have the prompt, the negative prompt, the image. Yeah, number of inference step, you know this. 30, 40, whatever you like. And then we have here two configuration adapters. You have one condition scaling. This is simply here the argument controls how much influence the conditioning should have in the input. Higher values means higher conditioning effects and vice versa. And we have some guidance scale exactly like in my last video. And then we generate simply here our image final adapter SDXL control net. It is not really that control net because we use here the adapter, but otherwise it is more or less exactly the same. Done. What else? Ready. Let's have a look. Here we go. Here we have our image. Okay. So for, I don't know, 10, 15 seconds compute time on a free Colab TPU, T4 GPU, GPU, not TPU, sorry. Not bad. Not bad at all. So here you have it. Why do you need here Photoshop AI or anything? If you can code, you are light years ahead. So here we go now. We have here our beautiful text to image adapter. We have a prompt. Look, here we have our adapter names. Everything from Kenny, sketch, linear. We have a style, cinematic, anime, photographic. And here our advanced option. The number of steps, yes, everything here, the negative prompts, the guidance scale, the adapter conditioning scale, and the adapter conditioning factor. Plus, you can even choose the seed. Isn't this great? So let's say, let's run this now. Here we go. And as you can see, it is rather fast because the text to image adapter on a stable diffusion Excel are so small. So it's a fast execution and here we have it. So here, this here is our, our Canny model, if you want. Here we have it, Canny, beautiful. So these are our edges and this is here Stable Diffusion Excel that follows here the edges that we tell the system you should follow those edges. And my prompt was simply background is fire. So now let's, let's use here some, what we go with? some line art photographic line art so different to canny line art we have now more or less some closed lines that is normally used for cartoons so let's have a look the adapter quite fast and as you can see here a different picture a different synthetic image interesting and here you have the line art, the drawing, more or less, and here filled in with Stable Diffusion Excel. Interesting. So what's next? Next is, of course, a sketch. So everything stays the same. We go here with a sketch so that you get an idea what is the difference. Look, it's a complete different picture. Stable Diffusion Excel, this is here our sketch that we sketched out. And Stable Diffusion XL filled this in a complete different motive. Interesting to see. So what else is left? 
You get it, we have open pose. So let's take here from the open pose from this image and let's have a look at the generated open pose and the result. And the result, yeah, of course, it's a man because we have just a pose that we give here to the adapter. So in order to change this, we say female character open pose. Yes, okay, okay, 40 seconds later. And here we have it. Look at this. Since we only have the pose information, this is the pose information here. Here, the shoulders, the face, the neck, and Stable Diffusion XL generated on this pose here, this particular synthetic image. So there you have it, all your different adapters you can take. Now the last one is the depth adapter for the three-dimensional depth for the background. And look, here we have now with the depth information, here you have it as a black and white, white is the foreground, black is the background, and this is the synthetic image from Stable Diffusion XL. Let's go with no style. Let's see what the system itself comes up with. This could be sometimes an interesting choice default by the system. So let's try this out. And I think then we have seen everything. Ah, quite some nice image. Okay, you see a different material, kind of a leather material, flames all over, eyes are different. Interesting. So there you have it. Here we go. This is our text to image adapter solution with very small adapters in complete contrast to the very huge gigabyte of control net here. Those tiny adapters are also some powerful tool you can use here with Stable Diffusion XL. I hope it was informative. It would be great to see you in my next video.